step right there. You're not angry right now. Oh, really? Isn't that weird? <laughs> Come on. I used to get angry a lot. I'm going to show you one second therapy to get rid of anger in a minute. And I know it sounds ridiculous and it works the whole time. And I'll explain why it works. But honestly, think of the thing that used to make you angry now. I don't need to know what it is. Have you got it? I can see. Look at the knuckles. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, as you think about that thing right now, how strong is it? About 10, she said. Okay, cool. Want to get rid of it? Cool. You can always have it back when you want, but I'm going to show you how to get rid of it right now. All I need you to do is this. Are you right-handed or left-handed? On your left hand, you're going to have your hand like so. And I want you... There you go. In England, left and right, it's a bit different. Hold down your small finger on your left hand, thank you. And continue to think about your problem. And just hold down that finger. At the same time, relax your jaw. So if your teeth are clenched, unclench your teeth and prop your jaw forward. Push your jaw forward just a little bit. So it's relaxed. And just keep doing that. Open your eyes. Keep doing everything I asked you to do. Relax jaw, finger pushed down. As you think about that thing now, honestly, that used to make you angry, I know you have the same memory, because we didn't take away memory, but where's the anger gone now? Come on, try harder. Try to get angry and have that finger down, relax your jaw, really, really try. Because they think this is like a plant or something right now. Like, I'll rip, really? I went to years of anger therapy and I've still got it. It could have gone in a second. So, this is something that you use in the moment. This is something you can use in the moment of an anger issue. She asked me, is this something you can do in the moment of an anger issue? I'm going to answer that in just a second. I'm going to answer why it works short term, long term. But now try and get angry if finally you can't. No, it's the memory still there, because we ain't taking away your memories, but the emotion. Is it almost like, I don't want to put words into your mouth, I can't be bothered to be bothered. Go, get rid of applause. Let me explain why that happened. I will mispronounce this. There's an ancient form of uh, oriental medicine, and it's called something along the lines of, you can take a seat right there. Uh, take a seat just for a minute, yeah. Uh, Jinjitsu, not Jujitsu, not the martial art, but Jinjitsu, something like that. And it's all about different hands, different fingers, having different emotions. So here's the thing, when you push down on your little finger with two fingers, you relax your jaw, you can't get angry. Try it now. Because the interesting thing is, when a stimulus comes in that causes us to be angry, unconsciously the amygdala, the front part of your brain, scans down and looks, is your jaw tense? Are you making fists or clenching your hands like so? If it gets that feedback, it releases your amygdala adrenaline or the fight or flight chemical in your body so you can fight, fright or freeze. When you relax your jaw and you push the little finger down, not with a fist, but with your two fingers, amygdala scans in less than a millisecond realize he's not making fists, his jaw is relaxed, he can't be angry. It always works all the time. I'll tell you a, a story. I was on the phone with Rogers. Who hears with Rogers? <laughs> and they passed me from call centre to call centre to call centre. And a phone call that should have took five minutes took an hour. Ugh, I'm getting angry. And they're passing me on, passing me on, passing me on. And I feel it. And I'm like, why don't I do that thing that I teach my clients to do? So I'm on the phone. I put it on speaker. I relax my jaw because I'm on hold. I'm not talking to anyone. Push my finger down. That 10 out of 10 anger disappeared. As soon as I let go, ah! You know what? I've got nothing to do for the next hour. I'm just going to sit here. No anger. I was peaceful. But I could not get angry when I was doing it. It can happen one time. But of course, emotions happen all the time. So when people come to me because they've got too much anxiety, too much fear, or too much sadness, the key is too much. Because you should feel all emotions. It's appropriate to feel all emotions. But when you're feeling too much of those emotions, it becomes a problem. So what happens here is you've got two things in your brain. They're called uh, neurological pathways. And what happens is if there's a stimulus that causes you to get stressed, for example, every time my wife or husband looks at me this way, it causes me to have panic. That's a trigger. 
amygdala scans down and it starts to release a bunch of fear chemicals inside your body. So if, if, if for example you are a smoker and how you deal with stress is you smoke or you're overweight and how you deal with your stress is you overeat. What happens is you've only got one road to go down. That's how you deal with your emotions. If you've only got one road to go down, ladies and gentlemen, it's not your fault that you keep doing this stupid behavior because you only think there's one road. What this work starts to do is it starts to open up a new road inside your mind, your neurology. So what happens, if you've got a road that no one travels down anymore, eventually what happens to a road if no one travels down it anymore? Shout out. Eventually, basically, it goes back to what it was originally, which if no one's traveling down a road, eventually it just goes back to grass and it goes back to nature. Basically, there is no road. It's the same way in your brain. So what happens is if you don't take that road to distress, anxiety, panic, fear, overeating, addiction, what addiction, whatever your thing may be, and we open up a new road of new chemicals coming into your brain, after a while it can happen that quickly and it might take a couple of days, but a new pathway opens up your brain that becomes your new normal, your new way of doing it. So instead of that thing that used to make you feel angry and you're ready to fight, flight or freeze, what happens is just like, stimulus comes in, you feel it, then you let go. Because there's two forms of learning. There's the learning I do with my clients like this, where we drill them in a session, and with some hypnosis to put the cherry on top of the cake. But also, when you sleep at night, your unconscious mind or your amygdala, two different things, but they do a thing called synaptic pruning, which basically means all the experiences or neurological highways, pathways in your brain that you no longer use, i.e. when I feel stressed, I don't overeat anymore, I don't like uh, up a cigarette, I don't cause myself anxiety. That road gets shut down. Your brain, literally, your neurology starts to prune it, so it disappears, and then when you wake up, that new neurological pathway is stronger in your brain, so that becomes your new normal. So that's the neurology why hypnosis and some of the stuff you saw me do today works with people and how it can be that quick and how it can look unbelievable, but that's what happens inside your brain.